Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 5. Prahlad, the saintly son of Hirani Kashipu, verse number 32. Naisam matistavan urukram mangrim, sparsyantata pagamo yadyatarta, Mahiya sampada rajo bisekam, Niskinchananam na vrinita yadvat. Niskinchananam grim. Sprisat yadnarta pagamo yad artaha. Mahiya sampada rajo bisekam. Niskin chananam na vrinita yadvat. Chant. Naisham vadi savar urukraman grim. Naisham vadi savar urukraman grim. Sprishatinarto bhagavadinarta. Sprishatinarto bhagavadinarta. Mahiya sampada rajo vishekam. Mahiya sampada rajo vishekam. Somebody out there. Come on, Somadatri, go for it. Consciousness. Tavat. That long. Urukram Angrim. The lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Who is famous for performing uncomic activities. Sprisati. Does touch. Anartha. Of wanted things. Apagama. The disappearance. the disappearance, yat, yat of which, which. Artha, artha, the purpose, purpose. mahiyasam, of, of the great souls, the mahatmas, the mahatmas. or devotees, devotees. Pada raja, by the dust of the lotus feet, feet. abhisekam, consecration, niskinchananam, of devotees who have nothing to do with this material world. Na, na not, Vrnita, may accept Yadvat as long as. <clears throat> so in a series of verses, there are three in a row where it's spoken by Prahlad Maharaj in response to his father's harassment here. 
now Pallad is responding in the, the complete way, and he sums up everything by this verse. Unless they smear upon their bodies the dust of the lotus feet of a Vaishnava, completely freed from material contamination, persons very much inclined to a materialistic life cannot be attached to the lotus feet of the Lord, who is glorified for uncommon activities. Only by becoming Krishna conscious and taking shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord in this way can one be freed from material contamination. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Becoming Krishna conscious brings about anartha apaga, the disappearance of all anarthas, the miserable conditions we have unnecessarily accepted. The material body is the basic principle of these unwanted material conditions. The entire Vedic civilization is meant to relieve one from these unwanted miseries, but persons bound by the laws of nature do not know the destination of life. As described in the previous verse, Isha Tantram Urudami Bada, they are conditioned by the three modes of material nature. The education that keeps the conditioned soul bound life after life is called material education. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has explained that materialistic education expands the influence of Maya. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has explained that materialistic education expands the influence of Maya. Such an ed education induces the conditioned soul to be increasingly attracted to materialistic life and to stray further and further away from liberation from unwanted miseries. One may ask why highly educated persons do not take Krishna to take to Krishna consciousness. The reason is explained in this verse. Unless one takes shelter of a bona fide, fully Krishna conscious spiritual master, there is no chance of understanding Krishna. The educators, scholars, and big political leaders worshipped by millions of people cannot understand the goal of life and take to Krishna consciousness, for they have not accepted a bona fide spiritual master and the Vedas. Therefore, in the Mundaka Upanishad, it says, Nayam Atma Pravachal. One cannot become self-realized simply by having academic education, by presenting lectures in an erudite way, or being an intelligent scientist who discovers many wonderful things. One cannot understand Krishna unless one is graced by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only one who has surrendered to the pure devotee of Krishna and takes the dust of his lotus feet can understand Krishna. First, one must understand how to get out of the clutches of Maya. The only means is to become Krishna consciousness, conscious. And to become Krishna conscious very easily, one must take shelter of a realized soul, a Mahatma or Mahat whose only interest is to engage in the service of the Supreme Lord, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, Mahatmanas to Mampartam Daivi Prakriti Asritaham Bajadaniyanam Manasom Yatva Bhutatim Avyayam O son of Prita, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine energy. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Therefore, to end the unwanted miseries of life, one must become a devotee. Yasya bhakti bhagavati akinchina sarai gunas tatra samastate sudaha. One who has unflinching devotional faith in Krishna consistently manifests all the good qualities of Krishna and the demigods. This is from Srimad Bhagavatam 5.18.12. Yasya Devi Parabhakti Hir Yata Devi Tata Guru Yastaita Kati Deyartam Prakasanta Mahatmanaha Only unto those great souls who have an implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master are the imports of the Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. Sweta Svatara Upanishad 623 Yamai Vaisa Srute, I'm sorry, M. Vivaisi Vrinute, Tena Labdhyas, Tasyaisa Atma Vrinute, Tanushwam. 
the Lord is attained only by one whom he self chooses. To such a person he manifests his own form. That's from the Mudaka Upanishads 323. These are Vedic injunctions. One must take shelter of a self-realized spiritual master, not a materially educated scholar or politician. One must take shelter of Niskinchana, a person engaged in devotional service and free from material contamination. This is the way to return home back to Godhead. Om Agyanti Mirandasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stabdi Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Tadati Swam Padati Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pachadine Nir Vishesha Shunyavadi Pashyatya De Satarine Pancha Kalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Vevacha Paditanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare so here it's mentioned, Prabhupada makes the point, one must take shelter of two principles or two aspects of the whole process of bhakti, Krishna and his bona fide representative, the pure spiritual master. Um, there are two classes, or two different classes of people. They are the Sahajyas and they are the Mayavadis. The Sahajyas, those who take things cheaply, that's the word Sahaja actually means one who takes cheap, cheap things cheaply. They accept Krishna, but they don't accept Guru. The idea is that we are, you know, part and parcel of Krishna, we have a direct relationship to Krishna, and therefore they exhibit all kinds of, what we say, dramatic expressions of devotion, which are just more or less uh, an acting program, to somehow or other convince themselves and others that they have devotion to the Lord. These are sentimentalists, Sahajyas, people take things cheaply. And these, of course, we don't see these in Western countries too much. But you can go, when you go to the, you know, the subcontinent, India, you know, there's a large amount of these personalities. In fact, they're quite in abundance. <laughs> uh, they don't see the importance of guru. Or if they do, they don't take any official relationship with a guru. They simply exhibit what they feel are their love for God in a very, what we say, ostentatious or pre pretentious way. And it's all artificial. Because, you know, we, we sing every day, Yasya Prashada Bhagavad Prashada, Yasya Prashada Nagoti Kutopi. Only by the grace of the spiritual master can one approach the Supreme Lord in devotion. And the last part, nagoti kotopi, that means everything becomes useless if one doesn't approach Krishna through his spiritual master. Of course, we might say, well, I don't have a spiritual master, I'm a new person. Can I practice? Yes, you can practice. Practice to the point where you can understand this, under this principle, because here Prabhupada mentions, these are all Vedic injunctions. And one who rejects the Vedas is called a Gnostic, or when we say atheist. The Vedas are the authorized forms of transcendental knowledge that give direction and clarity in the practice of all aspects of spiritual life, and particularly in the essence, which is what we say, bhakti yoga. So one has to follow the Vedas. One cannot concoct their own ideas or add anything to whatever the process or take anything away. One has to understand 
the words of the Vedas coming through Guru and Krishna himself, and then understand that and apply that in the practice of devotional service. Without accepting Guru, one cannot really understand Veda, because Veda is given to us by Guru. The Vedas are a lot vast, the Vedas, the Vedas are very, what we say, mysterious. Some of them are written in codes, some of them are written according to time, place, and circumstance, they're written for different types of spiritualists. And the Vedas are very hard to understand. Therefore, only with a pure devotee's explanation of the Vedic teachings can we understand what that's being said and how it applies to us and how we use it in order, to, in order to practice devotional service. This is very essential. So guru is essential. Tad vigyaranam guru abhigatsche. As Prabhupada would quote this verse quite often, that one must accept, and here, Prahlad Maharaj is giving that as a conclusion to his statements to his atheistic father. And he says it in a, such a, what we say, a complete way. <clears throat> Not only do he says accepting a guru, smear the dust from their lotus feet on the body, that means completely accept a guru. Not just what we say officially, yes, I have a guru, yeah, you know, you know I, I give him a donation every once in a while. And, uh, and I, on the Vyasa Puja day, I show up. You know, and I, I, I have my guru. He's, he's pretty cool. <laughs> you have your guru, and maybe he's cool also. <laughs> and so, and then we all they have, you know, it's like in guru ideas. But guru is one. There's only one guru. And who's that one guru? Krishna. But Krishna expands himself in the form of himself as a servitor of himself in the form of the pure spiritual master. This is the actual understanding. And that manifests itself in various, what we say, aspects. But guru is one. And guru's teachings are one. If guru doesn't teach according to Vedas, according to what Krishna gives, then he's not guru, he's goru. That means cow. <laughs> That means he, he has the position, but he's not actually representing the original guru, which, who is Krishna himself. So you have a lot of people, they like to take up positions in this world and pretend to be something that they're not in order to further their own, what we say, selfish interests. And some of them even sincerely take up this spiritual position, but because they're unauthorized to accept that position, they can't really help anybody. Therefore, a guru is empowered by Krishna. It doesn't come by any ecclesiastic rubber stamp, oh, here's a guru. That doesn't make a guru. What it comes by is Krishna's empowerment. When Krishna empowers that person by that person's pure devotion to him and by their preaching efforts, by that person's pre successful preaching efforts, then Krishna will consider empowering that person. So that's how a guru is understood by the empowerment of Krishna, and not any through, through any organizational means. So unless that's there, then of course, and Prabhupada makes this point here, and he kind of rejects all these other categories of people who have big positions and present themselves. There's a whole class of people who are academicians, and they may even know Shastra better than devotees, most devotees. They can quote Shastra. They can repeat Shastra. They even memorize Shastra. And they can talk very convincingly, but they can't save even themselves, but to speak about saving anybody else. Why? Because they approach devotional service in an academic way. So a guru is one who has bhakti, <laughs> pure bhakti. And that will, that, that, and then of course, tasmat guru prapad yaita jigyasa isreya uttamam sarvi pare jisnyatma brahma upasraya srayam. And that verse quoted from the 11th canto by Srila Prabhupada is actually the qualifications of the scripture. He must know the scriptures 
and be able to defeat all opposing arguments that come. Otherwise, they cannot sit on the seat of Vyas. That is what actually is a spiritual master. Not someone who smiles nicely and gives you Mahaprasadam and tells you what a wonderful person you are and don't forget my birthday, it's coming up and I actually need uh, you know, a few things, can you help me with that? So this is called Guru Seva, you know that, so. <laughs> So, you know, this is not guru, you know. And sometimes we see, even in our Krishna conscious society, people accept the spiritual master, maybe not from the not wrong reasons, but not completely the right reasons. Because he speaks nicely, because he walks in a certain way, because he's Indian. <laughs> yeah, there was a whole thing, you know. If you don't have an Indian guru, you don't really have a real guru. That, that was going on in our society for a while. And it's still, there's still undercurrents of that going on. But a real spiritual master is one who comes in disciplic succession from Krishna himself. He knows the scriptures. He can explain the scriptures in, in various ways according to different audiences. And he can defeat all opposing arguments as it's presenting. That is, one of the, that is a few of the qualifications of a guru. And also, doesn't have another business. He doesn't work part-time in, in uh, you know, holy foods, making pizza. And so he can get a little pocket change on the side just in case his devotees forget to give him a donation. This is not guru. A guru is one who actually he's... You know, he's fully absorbed in the process of serving Krishna by serving the conditioned souls, by guiding them you know, on the path of bhakti back home, back to Godhead. And Prabhupada makes it pretty strictly. He says, don't become guru. Janasa, what is that word? What is that verse? Najajanena nasya, pati nasasya, namochaya sarvapetu mecha guru nasasya. Don't become father, pretty heavy. Don't become mother, don't become guru, don't become teacher, unless you can deliver your, your, ch your chelas, your followers, your sons, your daughter from the cycle of birth and death. To become a leader is a very big qualification because misleaders go to hell faster than anybody else. Why? Because they, they, they mislead other people, and not only are they never responsible for their own misdeeds, but because they cause so many other people to go the wrong way, they get heavy reactions for that. So, And that's true in any category of leadership. And today we see, you know, just like we see political leaders, a political leader is supposed to be, when we say, uh, God empowered to lead the country. He's supposed to be a Rajarsi, a person who knows spiritual principles and leads both materially and spiritually and is guided by higher authority. And therefore, you see political leaders, they come and go so fast. They don't last long. In fact, they want to throw them out while they're still in there. Why? Because they don't know what it means to be a leader. So any leadership position is a very great responsibility. It doesn't mean, I'm not saying this to scare anybody, we want devotees to take up leadership positions because it's very much needed. And that also helps one to uh, make a progress on the path of devotional service. But one has to be qualified in order to do that. And sometimes we see a person who is not qualified takes a leadership position, but becomes qualified after having that position. That's a little risky, but it does happen sometimes. And as long, but the most important thing is to become qualified. So this principle here, and Prahlad Maharaj wants to make this point, it doesn't matter what you are or who you are. You cannot understand Krishna unless you not only serve your spiritual master, but you serve your spiritual master completely. 
You can't pick and choose the instructions. Well, I like this one. This one, and yeah, this one pertains to my god brother, not me. <laughs> there are two instructions, or two categories of instructions that the guru gives. One is the general instructions, and two, there are specific instructions given by in, to certain individual disciples. If you get individual instructions, you consider yourself fortunate. Consider yourself fortunate, because then you know exactly how to please your spiritual master. And then you can make a lot of nice progress in that way, just like Prabhupada received that instruction. Well, of course, it didn't, Bhakti Siddhanta gave that instruction to all his disciples. But Prabhupada took it up and therefore became glorious by taking up that instruction and making it his complete focus in his practice of devotional service. So yeah, so the instructions of the spiritual master in this verse here that's quoted in the purport, Yasya Devi Para Bhaktir, Yata Devi Tata Guru, Tasyaita Katite Dyarta Prakasananta Mahatmanaha. Unto, unto, only unto those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master, not just one, but both, all the imports of all Vedic knowledge are automatically revealed. Wow, that is a powerful verse. Meditate on that verse, because that is so powerful. What is it saying? Complete faith. Prabhupada used to say, my spiritual master is wrong, but he's right. It's not a matter of having logical understanding of Shastra or knowledge. It's a matter It's not a matter of having just understanding of the instructions. It's a matter of understanding deeply what the principle of guru is. We have many examples in the society of of Iska and how by deviating from the instructions of Parapad, one becomes asar or useless. And one who, who makes those instructions their life and soul uh, actually becomes very dear to the spiritual master. And what happens when that person be makes the instructions their life and soul? Not only do they make advancement, but they become empowered by that spiritual master. He gives them his shakti, and in that shakti, they make wonderful advancement and can also help others in their process of Krishna consciousness. Some people are a little sleepy. That's okay. We understand it's Monday, right? Monday is moon day, right? So it, so the moon has is, is still out, maybe, but you can't see it. So please don't go to sleep. Prabhupada used to say, Sleep 13 hours a day, but don't sleep in class. A, yeah, he said that. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> exact statement, that's not a, that's a paraphrase. <laughs> so yeah, don't, don't sleep in class, please. You're telling everybody this class is useless, so it's better to go to sleep. You're sending a nice message. <laughs> Maybe it is useless, but at least pretend you, you're interested anyway. <laughs> that way you don't fool it. You know, everybody else will maybe follow you. <laughs> so, yeah. And, uh, and there was that one point. That, yeah, and the other thing is that the general instructions of the spiritual master, we should all learn that. Therefore, as was Prabhupada said, the spiritual master is wrong, but he's right. Prabhupada gives an example in his own life. When they were in Calcutta, and they had just gotten this new building in, I think, Bagh Bazaar, I think it was. And it was a beautiful building, marble, and it had many, a couple floors. And it was one very rich merchant who was also a devotee, he gave his whole fortune to have that building built for the devotees. 
Before then, the devotees were living very simply. Now they had this beautiful marble building. But one day, a snake came all the way up to the higher floors of the building. And people were running around, snake, snake, you know, it's a deadly snake. So there was some confusion. Finally, Bhakti Siddhanta appeared and said, kill it. And so one disciple came and killed the snake. Now our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, was there and he saw that. He was thinking, how is it a saintly person can order the killing of a living entity? And so he was a little, he didn't think it was wrong, he just couldn't understand the instruction. He had some doubts about the instruction. So later, and he describes, he said, I was reading in, in the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj where it says that saintly persons take great pleasure in when scorpions and snakes are killed. Well, I read that section and he said, I, now I understood. It's not that we go around killing snakes and scorpions, but if they are, but if they attack, they can also be killed, like that. Why? Because they are envious living creatures, and they attack other living entities with no reason. There's no reason. You know, it's a lot of animals will attack for a reason, either because they're hungry or to defend themselves. But these living entities, for no reason, they just attack and cause death. So therefore, they're considered to be, you know, persona non grata, <laughs> at minimum. So the instructions of the spiritual master, even if you have some doubt about what is the instruction or how to follow the instruction, don't reject the instructions or try to follow it in your own way. Get a clarification. Sometimes I hear devotees, I don't want to bother my spiritual master. He's so busy. He's traveling around the world. And he's got so many responsibilities. I don't want to bother him. But if your Krishna consciousness goes down because you don't really have what you need to practice or you have a lack of clear understanding for whatever reason, and then, and if you don't, you're not able to get the answers within the general society of Vaishnavas, you have to approach your spiritual master and get a clarification. It's not that you have to approach every question. Hopefully you get the answers in the association of devotees. That's what the association of devotees is for, to help us in different ways. But at the same time, if things still remain unclear, one must approach the spiritual master. Because the spiritual master's main service to Krishna is to bring the disciple back to God. It's not holding a particular, you know, administrative post or, you know, leading various types of kirtan programs. His main service is to bring his disciples back home, back to God. And that's why he takes that position. <laughs> So therefore, he's actually pleased when his disciples actually come and in a submissive way ask for some guidance because it's also mentioned by Srila Rupa Goswami that is part of the responsibility of a disciple is to, always, is to inquire regularly into the process of knowledge in order to continue on enthusiastically on the path of devotion. Because one of the greatest stumbling blocks in devotional service is called doubts. If you have a doubt, as Krishna write, writes in the Bhagavad Gita, for the doubting soul, there's neither happiness in this life nor in the next. So whenever there's any doubts, clarify those doubts, because doubts are like demons. And it says that Krishna killed the demon of doubt. So doubts have to be destroyed. And this is one of the greatest obstacles that devotees can confront is a doubting mentality about the process, about themselves, about the guru, about Krishna, <laughs> something. So everything should be clear. And that way we can, what we say, remain enthusiastically engaged in devotional service. Okay, so we have 
some time. Any questions or comments? Marge? I have some, I have some questions and I also have some comments. Okay. Thank, thank you for the class. Uh, you, you mentioned that the guru is not chosen by ecclesiastical means. It's simply by qualification. But it seems like in ISKCON that we do have some... I knew you were going to bring that up. <laughs> but I'm glad you did. Go ahead. Yeah, just like Brahmins are supposed to be uh, Brahmins. They're supposed to have the qualification of mm -hmm. Brahminical behavior. But still, we don't just... Everyone is not self-made Brahmin. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so what's the question then? So, but in this kind, you said that, so how does that relate to ecclesiastical, the guru is not ch chosen ecclesiastical, ecclesiastically, but he's... That's, that's still a controversy, you know, that throughout, throughout our society. Still no, goes There's on. a lot of controversy. <laughs> What is I your, mean, we're, what is, we, we're, we're accepting what the GBC has done. GBC has made it a way of authorizing people. So in order to avoid what we call pretentious charlatans come rushing in and saying, I'm guru, to keep that purity of, print of the society in order. But that alone doesn't make a personal guru. That's the point I was making. Yeah, of course, I understand. The, uh, the other thing is that, that you mentioned that the guru is uh, supposed to be a completely pure devotee. But th does that imply that when one becomes a guru, he becomes a completely pure devotee, or? No, and that's also mentioned in Nectar of Instructions, that there are gurus on, t on different levels. You can have Guru who is a Kanista Adhikari, a Madhyama Adhikari, and a Uttama Adhikari. So it says one should accept the uh, spiritual master who's on the platform of Uttama. But if there's no Uttama available, then one should, uh, one can accept a Guru on the Madhyama Adhikari. But that, then that disciple can only make his progress as far as his spiritual master is. But if the spiritual master makes more progress, then that disciple can also make more progress. Like that. So that's explained in Nectar of Instructions. So, um, but Prabhupada understood that, you know, when he, what we say, authorized or designated certain people to take up the mantle of spiritual master, he could understand they weren't all on the liberated platform but they were engaged fully in devotional service and they had an understanding of the process of Krishna consciousness. And he said, you might not become completely purified, but continue in the process and, re and try to come to that platform. Uh, so there was, there is considerations according to time, place, and circumstance that allows for someone to take the position who is not completely, what we say, a pure devotee, unalloyed devotee, an anya bhakta, who, one who is still, not that they're trying to fulfill material desires. If they're trying to fulfill material desires, that's a disqualification for the, for the post of spiritual master. They still may have some tinge of material taints left in their Krishna consciousness, but they're fixed in devotional service. That's the most important part that they're fixed in their Krishna consciousness. And that's, you know, there are ways to evaluate how a person is, fi whether they're fixed or not fixed. And that's the process of, of bhakti. So the point is, yeah, one can be, we want to, I mean, Prabhupada mentions many times the pure devotee spiritual master. He says that a lot his lectures, the pure devotee spiritual master. But there are situations, and of course it's there in Iskand, where we can see maybe someone who is not completely pure, but at least they're engaged in the four principles of Madhyam. And they're fixed on those four principles. You know the four principles, right? They give their love to the Lord. They make friends and associate with Vaishnavas. They preach to the innocent and they avoid the atheists. 
like that. These are the four principles. One who is fixed on that platform can also take, you know, disciples. Good, thank you. Does that help? Yeah. So the comments you just got raised from my thing here, but I'm, I'll try to remember what I said. This is a very hot topic, just in case you don't know it. No, I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> we can always make it hotter. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn on the, uh, the AC at the same time. <laughs> so, uh, AC Bhaktivedanta Swami can cool us down here. This, these are just some comment. Is that because in this verse it mentions that there are certain persons who are, are not, they don't accept Guru. You know, the, you mentioned the Sahajis and the. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention the Mayavadis. Yeah, well, the Mayavadis, they accept Guru. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Just Guru. <Yeah. laughs> For temporarily. See, even the Sahajis, I believe, they, they have their leaders mm. of the. But that's, and even the devotees, sometimes we can, we can get initiated and seemingly accept Guru. But unless we learn from the Guru how to respect the other devotees, as you mentioned, the, the four principles, the four principles of, um, of the intermediate level, the Madhyam Adhikari, unless one is actually practicing those, how to honor those who are superior on the same, practically on the same level as Guru and cooperate with those who are on the uh, same level and help the innocent, right. though it actually doesn't come to the spiritual platform, remains on the materialistic platform. Yeah, he, he stays kanista. Yeah. The other thing is, when you mention that the gurus are always right, there can be so many different ways of looking at it. Yeah. Okay. One of them is, as you mentioned, another way is that, uh, first of all, a devotee, when they, unless they come to the, at least the Madhya Mahatakari platform, then they can't really even see who's on the Madhya Mahatakari platform. Because mm -hmm. Kanista, by definition, doesn't have proper scriptural knowledge proper scriptural vision. Right. And yet he's asked at some point to accept a guru. So all he can do is, as an initiating guru, all he can do is the best he can. And therefore, there is certain guidance needed by those who are supposed to be on a higher level who have more experience than he is to qualify those who are probably best yeah. fitted to take that position. That's the main thing. One of the things that's lacking in our society is the educational process. We should educate devotees what it means to be a disciple, what it means to be a guru, what, how do you understand a spiritual master. We need more and more pro programs for education. And that's not enough, there's not enough of that. And therefore a lot of devotees just don't know. Or are not giving the proper guidance either. Oh, we have a we're trying to do something. We we have the, there are causes like the, the disciple cause, right. the spiritual leadership cause. It's but a, that's it's just we need more of those. It's preliminary, yeah. So, the disciple he has to, the aspiring disciple he has to do the best of his ability by consulting with Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, being in the organization, try to take the guidelines. But once he, if he becomes convinced that this person is as good as God, and he accepts initiation, then he's obliged not to give up his discrimination, but he's, in other words, he can't see everything the Guru is doing is divine when it's not divine. That would be foolish. But as long as the Guru is bringing him back to Godhead, as long as he's following his Guru, and he's living in this, you know, following the instructions of his superiors, then even if he seems to do something wrong from the materialistic point of view. You're right, there's the point. There's the wrong, that, 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 that can be accepted, but not from the spiritual platform. Yeah, so, <laughs> so then he should be followed as long as, because yeah. he, may be do, he may be doing something wrong from the materialistic point of view, right. but as long as he's fixed in, as Prabhupada said, the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu it's the preaching. That's the point, yeah. yeah. And even sometimes Prabhupada would 
say a verse wrong, or he would forget a verse, and people would think, uh oh. You know, and Jayadwaita Maharaj gives his own personal example when he saw that. And then he asked his god brothers about that, and they said, you know, this, we shouldn't see that as, as a, you know, the flaw. That's not the perfection, the spiritual master. He may forget a verse, or he may quote the verse wrong. That's, that doesn't disqualify, disqualify him from uh, you know, his position as spiritual master. So sometimes you know, people see the material things. That's why when a person is a personal servant of a spiritual master, they don't usually last too long. <laughs> why? Because they, they start to observe the general routine of the spiritual master and start to find faults in the, in the general things he does. And, but the most important point, and as you made it, and the exclusive point, is that he's fixed in process and he's bringing, he's uh, guiding that disciple back home, back to God. That's the, that's the principle that one should understand as the, the main principle. And if there's some, even if there's some question in relationship to what he says spiritually or shastrically, one can approach and question that. But then again, one has to be pranipatena, not just challenging, but one should uh, approach with an idea to understand clearer. What the, That's one of the advantages of having a spiritual organization, right. such as ISKCON, is that the disciples may find it difficult to assist or help their guru, but the God Brothers, they should be helping each other, right. coming to a higher platform of spiritual yeah. life. And the disciples can also get help from the Guru's God Brothers, too. Because it says that you should see your your God, the God brothers of your spiritual master on the same level as you see your spiritual. You should treat him the same way. No, he's my, he's, he's not my guru. No, guru God brothers are also treated with the same respect one treats one spiritual master. Maybe we don't know that. <laughs> And if it's, um, you know, there's an interesting verse in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam when Brihaspati came into the assembly of, uh, of uh, Indra when he was getting worshipped. And he was surrounded by all the different devas and they were chanting the glories of Indra. And Indra was sitting there with his Sachi Devi on his throne. And Brihaspati walked in. Now, Indra noticed his spiritual master, but did nothing to greet his spiritual master. And then Prihaspati noted his attitude and didn't say anything and just turned around and left. As soon as that happened, Indra realized that he had committed a mistake by omission, by not acknowledging his, the presence of his spiritual master. And right after that, the demigods lost their power and they were defeated by the demons. And in one verse, there is, it's mentioned there's five, what we say, faults of a disciple. Five things that the disciple can fall into, that is what we say, uh, wrong mentality. One is to be a hypocrite. One is to be, what is the other one? To be disobedient. One is to be familiar, one is to be, what's the other one? There's, th there's two more. Uh, something like hypocrite, or what is it? Duplicious, duplicious, hypocritical, disobedient, familiar, and there's one more. <laughs> well, that, that, that's way down there. That's like undertama. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I think you're right. There's, and that's all mentioned in one purport. Prabhupada mentions all five of them in the one purport. It says these are the disqualifications 
of a disciple. 6, 11, 17 is the verse. 6, Canto 11th chapter, verse number 17. So study that verse because we can, that way we know what to avoid both in the attitude and the execution of our, our spiritual life like that. Okay. You looking for the verse, Marge? <laughs> okay. Should we continue on and wait till you read it? Well, it's the, you can read the verse, but the, 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 the indications are mostly in the purport. Go ahead, read the verse. 6, 11, 17? Yeah. No purport? This is uh, going to 6, 11. Hmm. Okay, I thought it was 6, 11, 17. It's 6, 11 something. Maybe it's six, five, seventeen. No? Well, I got one part right, it's in the sixth canto. <laughs> <laughs> it's really an interesting purport. Yeah, that's for six, seven, eleven. I think yeah. <laughs> seven, eleven. <laughs> seven, eleven. You and not do you find it? It's right, it's right after Brihaspati left and Indra's yeah, lamenting. Yeah, I know that's what I, I meant. Indra's lamenting. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, that's why. He's starting to lament. But then the demons attack the demons in the media. Did you try 6, 11, 17? Sorry. Six Six. And what chapter are you on? Seven. Six, seven, eleven, I think. Duplicious is a hypocrite is one who's making a show of devotional service. Duplicious is one who has another motivation. In other words, he presents himself in one way and uh, actually has another. Duplicious means I'm, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, but I'm really interested in finishing my round so I can do something else. In other words, 
or they present themselves in front of the spiritual masters being very devoted because they're looking for some material blessing. They want to improve, in other words, they want to improve their material life by taking up devotional service. Did you, did you find it? No. If anybody has the sixth canto, I can find it immediately, but I can't find it on, on these electronic things. <laughs> Is there a sixth canto available here somewhere? It's good to have a set of Bhagavatams in the temple. Is there one in here? No. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll bring it. I'll bring the, the verse tomorrow. Sorry about that. <laughs> One thing he does mention here is that uh, even if the guru is seemingly wrong or not uh, so elevated, but if the disciple, well, say a devotee is not so elevated, but if you try to please that devotee and the devotee becomes pleased, and you become elevated. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. <clears throat> There's nothing to add to that one. That's just the way it is. <laughs> That's devotional service. Is the end of devotional service means to please Krishna and to please the devotees in such a way that they benefit in their Krishna consciousness, not materially please the devotees. Something in 6, 7, 15. That's it. I'm sorry. That's it. You got it. 6, 7, 15. Read the verse. Therefore, with great frankness and without duplicity, I shall now bow down, bow my head to the lotus feet of the Haspati, the special master of the delegates, because he is in the mode of goodness, is fully aware of It's, uh, it's uh, Indra's lamenting his offense, and now he's making this thing in his mind to, you know, change by doing all these things. And in the purport, Prabhupada mentions these 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 five uh, anarthas. Yes, six, seven, fifteen. Thank you. Okay, so we should move on. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Srila Prabhupada ki. Hare Krishna.